Borenzes Jogobert. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, tonight I'm going to uh, present my talk in English. So it is my first talk in English, so please be gentle. Um, and uh, at first I wanted to thank all the organizers for this amazing conference because uh, this is the very hard thing to pull off. Uh, let's just clap them to them because they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, mainly tonight we're going to talk about dynamic styling systems. Uh, we're going to understand to why, what I mean by this, but at first I want to uh, thank my friend, uh, I think you know him, he came for a JavaScript conference last year, his name is Tejas, he's an amazing, he helped, me, he helped me with the advices, so thank you dude, and make sure to follow him, I mean you will restore the faith in humanity in like two or three tweets. <laughs> okay, a little bit of background, uh, I work at Render Forest, um, so uh, at, uh, at Render Forest, I do mainly React. So uh, we do really love React at Render Forest. All our uh, front end stack is covered with React, uh, and we do leverage some of React's very cool features to meet our needs. And right now, we are uh, in a process of delivering our third web application, which is a website maker. And after that, we will have <coughs> all in one branding platform. And we do have a video maker entirely built with React. We do have a logo maker entirely bit with React, and right now the website maker mainly with React and Next.js. Uh, so, a little bit of context, right? So, uh, when we have a lot of web applications, uh, and all are written in React, and all, on, all are under one domain, uh, they need to look similar, they need to feel the same. So, mainly, uh, my talk will generally hover around design systems, uh, and uh, I'm not really going to talk about uh, what design systems actually are, but uh, rather we're going to explore how we implemented some kind of partial things. Uh, and not about implementation of a component library or a style guide, uh, mainly the challenges that we faced uh, building the website maker was the actual theming. So the term already describes itself. It is a website maker, so users uh, uh, will need to customize like everything. They need to change the page styles. They need to change the component styles, the component appearances, etc. So like the button shadows and also. Uh, but at first, let's understand uh, what we mean by theming, right? What themes mean. It turns out that Invision came with this uh, description: what theming is. Uh, basically, it says if it affects color, it relates it related to theming. Otherwise, it's not. It's fairly simple. It's okay. But uh, it, it works in a context of like dark and light themes, and uh, where everything related is to only to colors. Uh, so right now, uh, as we understand the theming, the theming thing is like having like a uh, dark or light theme of your blog post, uh, blog page, or some kind of your web application. But when you're building exactly the uh, when when we need to give a user to customize all that themes. Uh, we need to talk about them. I mean, we are adding a little bit of complexity, right? So in a context of, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, in the context of dark and light themes, I mean, we can implement it very easily and we don't need any kind of systems. I mean, like, this can go very well. I mean, this can go work either. And if we do have some kind of things that change besides color in the theme, we can like uh, manage to create some kind of utility function or so, and eventually we can either use the actual, like the CSS uh, prefer color thing. Okay, but uh, a little bit of complexity is uh, when we are starting to know that besides uh, just writing the regular CSS, we can uh, face a little bit of challenges, right? So, uh, in terms of complexity, <coughs> I will show you the diagram of how our um, components um, in a website maker works in a context of a page. So, at first we do have component. Component describes uh, component is described with its themes. So basically, the component themes can only be uh, can only control the, com can the component color appearances. For example, the background colors, the paragraph, and, and so. Um, and we do have all in that, like, uh, in a context of a page. So the page has its own styles. So the complex thing is that the uh, page styles actually, actually can change how themes affect the components. So we do have this, like, 
tight uh, t thing that is together. Uh, actually, I wanted to I wanted to show you a little bit of how it is working. I think I'm, I think I might. Let's just try it. So this is the earliest alpha version. So everyone, you, every one of you is like seeing the basic version of our website maker. I we hope to release it very soon. It's like uh, a job is like in a month or so. It is loading. Is it loading? Yes. The greatest Wi-Fi connection ever. Okay. Do we have an? Oh, oh, we do have anything here. Okay. Basically, this is a component, uh, and we can reason about the components as sections in a web the website. So every component is a section. So it's not the, uh, it is also the buttons, but the user can only add and uh, remove these sections. And uh, the theme thing I was talking about is this, when we can change the overall, com overall appearances of the components. So this is the themes. And we also have, have the styles. Uh, so we, when we're choosing the sharp style, it's like paging, uh, changing all the uh, button appearances to be flat, right? OK, so this was a little bit of. Uh, showing and how what we are going to build. Okay, uh, that was the demo. So, the uh, everything is worked like this. So, component has its own themes, uh, and uh, the theme only related to the component, and it only can change the color appearances of the th of that actual component. But page styles, uh, they are only related to page. They change the overall appearance of the shapes in, in the website, and they can actually affect component themes. So it can be really fairly complex. Uh, and first, I want to show how we start to, uh, how we start building our web page and how we just map through the components and use their themes. So basically, at some point of our web application, we do have a mapping uh, where we do have about where we have the data of the components as an array, and we're mapping through them. And actually, this is the mo most important part. When we wrap it around our own theme provider, which tells our components which theme they are initially, which theme is chosen, uh, chosen uh, the color palette overall of, of the website and the actual style of the page. So it's like sharp, uh, rounded, or cornered, and the actual component, which is like fairly simple uh, wrap component. Uh, and so, um, uh, if we if we decide to not go with any kind of abstraction to build some kind of thing around this, we will end up like this, and uh, we would like we would write a bunch of if statements to check if we are whether in a rounded style or another theme, and to control that and write styles. So basically, we're going with CSS in JS. Uh, it was like chosen to <laughs> use, and we actually built on top of that. We didn't choose um, to do another way. So this is the actual uh, file system of the component itself. So we do have a, a script that is generated from the component name, and it generates these files. The index.js file is the interface file for importing and exporting. The component.js file is the actual component. It is the actual JSX right, written in there. And uh, the most important stuff is uh, component that theme and component that style. It is like uh, every component defines its own themes, and we do have uh, component that's JS where we write our CSS in JS. So at first, let's uh, take a look on how uh, what is look, what is the theme file looks like. So basically, the theme file is like constants. It is uh, it, it, it is telling our component that we have dark, light, and extra light themes, and we basically describe the object the keys and values of this object as a. Uh, CSS properties which will be affected when we will change the themes. So, basically, for example, if we choose the dark dark theme, uh, we will pretend that uh, we will be expecting that light background, that background keys will be changed, and we will use it in later in the CSS in JS. I will show how. And the other light and extra light themes. And actually, we're going to understand why uh, we do have the callbacks there and what the the P means there. The P stands for palette, and uh, when we show the, when we see the actual implementation of uh, our system, we can understand how it's working. And you can actually notice this kind of strange stuff. So we actually uh, telling that 
when we're using the dark theme, our border shadow or button shadow and race shadows will be none. So basically we're deleting that CSS property, which, which somehow was affecting, and we'll understand how. So actually this is the theme file, and this is the style file and how we're using. The actual, uh, the actual utility function, which we call as a system, or as, which, which is the core, core of the style system, is this style provider. Uh, which will in, uh, we're initializing the style provider at the start of the file. We're giving the theme, which we, which we described there, this overall object. And it gives uh, us a back uh, curry function, which we, which we uh, can use in a CSS and JS. So basically, the keys that, we, uh, that you saw here, like background, uh, light background, and so, are used here as a get style for prop background, heading, and paragraph. So it is completely, completely automated, so we're just changing the theme and the actual value of heading will be changed. So, by this, <coughs> we uh, described how our themes look like and we also need to show how our page styles look like, right? We do have a component theme, uh, we do have, uh, right now we need to describe our page styles. So the page style theme, which was affecting like the rounded, the, uh, which was affecting the buttons, uh, the shot, uh, the rounded, the cornered, or the flat one, uh, are e exactly the same thing as we're describing the theme, uh, but with only one caveat. It is like the constant, it is only one, it is described once, and uh, we don't have any other descri descriptions of the page styles uh, when we create other pages. So basically, this is the constant file where we create what kind of CSS properties will be changed upon changing rounded, uh, rounded corner, and flat styles. So, uh, this is the styles. Okay, and uh, right now we're going to check uh, actual, the actual style provider implementation. It will be tricky, but I hope I can, on, uh, I can explain it well. Uh, so this is actually the, this is not the full implementation. We do have a lot of uh, checks to uh, encounter it, to make sure we have a theme name and so. So basically, at the top, uh, we are importing our page styles. I'm not sure you can see this, but I mean it's okay. Bigger. Give me a second. Oh no. It is relative to the page style. I can. I will try to un. No, the page. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is the page styles. Uh, we import the constant, uh, which we described, uh, which we described as a page style constant, uh, and after that we uh, we describe our function style provider, and. Uh, style provider is a function with three levels of careen. Yes, it can be complex, but bear with me. We can understand all this stuff together. So at first, we're taking, the, we're waiting for the theme data. Actually, the theme which component is de describing, and uh, you can see at the top, uh, the first argument is the theme for the style provider, which is returning the curry function, which is the get style for prop, which we can use this way. And the <laughs> the second argument of the uh, get style, uh, the actual argument of the get style for probe is the second argument for our style provider. And because we're using CSS and JS, all we know that the uh, functions in CSS and JS using styled API is auto carried with component props. So it is like the uh, very handy utility to have that. We just don't, don't write actually the uh, double parentheses and props. So we do have every prop that is defined in, uh, is working within the uh, component and and the uh, actual implementation. So we can see here that we're getting the component, that we're getting the theme which we, which was wrapped around the component uh, in the entry point of our application where the components were mapped. And we do have our theme data, so we can access the theme name, we can access the page style name, and we access the palette, the global palette, which are, we are using in an uh, application. So basically what, what we're doing, after knowing uh, which, actu which actually theme we're using, like dark, light, or extra light, we can extract from the theme object the dark object, which is with its properties, 
And then we can use exact, exactly the same way for the page size. So we can look, it is sharp, or it is rounded, or is it cornered, and get that portion of object from the page style object with the constant which we described. And basically what we're doing is we're merging those styles together. Uh, we, this is the part which is a little bit of complicated. Why do we merge them together? Because we do have complex styling system, right? So basically the thing is that our comp if our component is in dark theme, it needs to not have um, border shadows, uh, box shadows, sorry. So if uh, our page style is in rounded style, all our buttons uh, have shadows, but if a component, if a user changes the component theme from light to dark, we need to override that shadows. And basically we need to remove the shadow property from the CSS. And, um, and that's where we merge them together. After merging, oh, sorry. So, after merging, we are actually overriding with uh, using like the spread operator of the uh, JavaScript. We are actually overriding the uh, styles which are which were described for the page. And actually, we are going like with this. Uh, the top portion is the page styles. I mean, this portion is the. Uh, page styles, which are described in our constant. So we do have, for example, a border radius, which will be 10 <laughs> pixels, which are, for example, for a rounded style. But when user chooses the dark theme, we actually merge with this object, the shadow and button shadow, which are none. So basically, if we are, our theme object is more superior, it is spread last. So we're going to override the actual properties, which will need to be overridden in the actual theme context. So by this, we are getting this object where we can call everything with our palette, and the actual, and actually, the oh, I haven't highlighted it, and the actual uh, pop, uh, the callbacks, um, the callback is right here where we call the style getter with our palette. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, this is the actually actually the uh, the object where we are using in our website. Okay, and my slides are kind of screwed up right now. Let me continue in this way. So, sorry, this microphone is okay. This is some kind of random, uh, random party parrot to just relieve the complexity and the problematic thing that I can. I, the problems that I have with explaining stuff. Uh, so uh, the actual, the actual the open source uh, library, which are very close to which we, what we build, is style system created by Brent Jackson. He's like in, really into theming. He's working at Gatsby, uh, and, he's impl and he implemented the new Gatsby support for themes. So basically, what you can do with style system, style system, you can define your themes and use them as a custom properties on your styled APIs. So styled APIs, by I mean, I mean, uh, I mean the CSS and JS APIs. So it, it needs a little bit of uh, tooling to do so. So you need the bubble plugin to use that, and so but it's fairly simple, uh, fairly uh, close to what we build. But uh, actually, it is for like everything. And it, it can be used even when you, when you do have only two themes, dark or light. So basically, what, what we've did is like we wrap component with according theme context, our components that are uh, pre present in a website. We create the page style object with global styles, so they are constants. And then we declare component themes. Uh, and by declaring the component themes, we we are saying that these keys will be changed upon changing every theme, uh, and we are actually getting the overall description, right? So uh, the main focus of what we're building was uh, some, I mean, the implementation was com some kind of tricky. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how well I can, I, could, uh, I can explain that to you, but the actual API was very simple, so uh, people just call get style, uh, uh, people just initialize with, theme pro uh, with style provider at the top of their file with the coding theme, and it gives them back a uh, current function, basically a callback, and they are calling with the appropriate CSS key, uh, or not CSS key, custom declared key, for example, 
for box shadow CSS uh, property, we will call the shadow or box shadow example. And we will get the styling according to theme and styles, page styles. So we don't need to worry about uh, which, with, which theme we're using or which uh, page style we're on. And uh, we actually uh, tested that uh, internally with our UI engineers. So they're very talented UI engineers, but they're uh, mainly focused around CSS and HTML. So they're very, very good at CSS. But they're no, they didn't have any prior experience with React. Uh, and we just uh, hooked them with this. <laughs> and they just went very well. So uh, I mean, the test was kind of passed. Uh, they can adopt this API and use that, uh, use that uh, when they were creating our components, actually. Uh, so after that, we started, you know, uh, I've started to reason about how we can actually implement it with much better and much, much less complex things. Uh, so basically, the, uh, actually, you, we can uh, implement everything with everything this. We did with CSS variables. Uh, we basically needed a function uh, which will be called and just uh, after changing the themes and just override the global variables of the style of the CSS properties and we will just use the bunch of CSS generated class names and use that in our components or we can use uh, the same kind of or for example CSS uh, emotions CSS property utility to leverage with which is uh, the, when you're describing the CSS, uh, when you're calling with the CSS function, you describe the CSS and JS styles, and you use them as a class name for your component, not with the styled API. <coughs> so it's like uh, many, many ways you, we can try to you know, implement this, but I think uh, which the one we came, it's like using one function, which is, it is like pretty complex function, I think, but it is doing its job. Mainly, I don't know. So, actually, and uh, what was the interesting stuff when I was thinking about what we did? Uh, it is pretty much framework or library agnostic. So, when you, for example, I was digging how we can we do that in Svelte because, like, Svelte was uh, a thing to talk about right now. Uh, actually, we can do that because Emotion Core support Emotion Core you, uh, can be used within the Svelte. So, actually, we can implement exactly the same thing uh, in the context of Svelte, but we need to uh, uh, tweak a little bit of um, our utility functions where, which, uh, when we're merging the styles. So uh, in Svelte, uh, the context works another way. So we don't have the context. We need to work around that. So basically, uh, this was my talk. Um, I'm not sure how I, I can explain that to you, but it was a very complex thing that we came out to Render Forest, but actually we are very happy with the results. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and right now we do have uh, some time for the questions. You can try, you can try uh, questions in Armenian, I will translate them if you want. No? Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, so hey. th there's a, um, in your uh, dark theme, for example, you're using a function which is just returns none for, mm -hmm. for example, for border. Why mm -hmm. uh, don't use instead uh, just none? Uh, so why we don't want to use yeah. function? With, uh, why, uh, where? Uh, if you will scroll up, I will show an example. Was some functions that returns just none. Yeah, here. For example, here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for example, ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, for that function, mm -hmm. because it, uh, it, uh, it don't have uh, any. Yeah, it don't. It doesn't have any kind of parameters. Okay. So the question is uh, why we're uh, why we're giving the callback and just returning none, and why we can just uh, go with none. So uh, actually, at first uh, we did like you said, uh, it was not a callback; it was like, just none, and we were using the styles. But for the consistency of the API, uh, we will need to cho ch check is it a callback or not to call it with a global palette. So uh, for the sake of removing that if statement, we did, this li we did it like this way to uh, have a consistency, a consistency across the API. So it is the main reason. I mean, you can completely go without the callback. Ah, OK, cool, thanks. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you for the talk.
Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so you show the method which uh, style provider, yeah. which takes two styles from page and uh -huh. from the theme, uh -huh. and applies them. Uh -huh. I'd like to understand if, uh, in case a user wants to add uh, some custom CSS, mm -hmm. how are you going to handle that? No, oh, uh, we're not supporting custom CSS, so uh, it is like um, some kind of uh, simple uh, stuff, so user can't write its own CSS. I mean, we can implement that in future, or maybe we can implement some kind of interface to create its own things. Like, I mean, for, for example, without the dark light or extra light, I mean, pink or blue. I mean, we can support that, but uh, right now, no. So, uh, yeah. did you think about that? Or, or Sorry? Did you uh, think about that? or? No, I, I mean, we're never going to implement custom CSS writing. I mean, it, it is not in our requirements. But we can implement the actual implementation of a theme. I mean, we can give uh, some kind of interface to describe a theme name, for example, blue, and to just say, I want this button to be blue, and uh, just use it in the exact same way how we did in the style provider. OK, thanks. Thank you, too. OK. Uh, I would like to know your advice about uh -huh. Best library, best CSS library working with React. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, best uh, CSS oh. library. For it's like a controversial question. I can like uh, I can just go with the best CSS. I personally prefer Emotion. I just don't know why. Uh, but there, um, the there is the thing called Linaria, which is like pretty great. I mean, uh, it depends on uh, what kind of stuff you're building. I mean, the start component is like the simplest one. Emotion is like uh, um, split into different packages, so you can just install what you use, what you, what you want to use. Linaria is like not runtime; it is working build time. It generates CSS, actual CSS files from your CSS in JS. So I mean, it depends how you do. But personal, my preference, like Emotion, it's like personal preference, I think. Thank you. Thank you too. Oh, okay. Uh, I I mean, we finished uh, five minutes. Uh, okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, um, I think it's good talk. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, I want to ask a question. Where do you prefer to keep uh, the state about uh, them? Um, how do you share with uh, another components with Childs? Uh, use Redux, or maybe you keep it in context, React context. We use uh, we use uh, Redux also. We use context also. But the uh, this is uh, like this is a different thing to talk about. Uh, we use Redux in our website maker in a very interesting way. So every component, uh, I mean, I can show you that. Let me just find a file. So basically what we did, we did the, like, the actual modular thing. You can see that there are, besides theme and JS, there are actions JS and register JS. Basically every component, every section in our page describes its own actions and describes its own reducers. So uh, actually it helps us to be very modular so, uh, and work in a separate environment. For example, our UI developers can just generate a component and work in, the, in that uh, folder directory. So we do use Redux uh, and we do use context. If it answers your question, question, we do use a lot of context in this for theme sharing, uh, basically mainly for theme sharing and style sharing, and Redux for all our state management, uh, for component data, which is related to the page. And otherwise, we do it like uh, with hooks and so. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, too. This microphone thing is like killing me. Yeah. So, we don't have a church, Thank you very much, Nora Gallus and Mercy Shot.